Welcome to Welly World Podcast. I'm your host, Welly Jackson. Yo, special episode today. Special. We got something for y'all. <laughs> Ladies first. Lex is in the building. How what's you doing, up, sweetheart? What's up? Lex, get in the building. How is everybody doing? Mr. Alex Quo is in the building. Front and center. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. We out here. You know what it is. <laughs> good morning. Good evening. All of them. We all of them right now. It's okay. This guy, all of them. We always great them. energy. We got, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the cerebral Jesus is How in the building. Doing, man? All good. How you doing? Since he didn't say the middle of the night, it was the middle good. of the night. We out here. We out here in the middle of the night. Good we out you. here, man. Listen, very special guest. Special. Eight time Emmy Award winner. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. no, we ain't got no, this ain't no little shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna. All right, go ahead. You go. Talk you heavy. you, you, you go. guys know him. From Dateline NBC's to catch a predator, Mr. Chris Hansen. Thank you for joining us, Chris. Mr. Chris. Hey, Welly. How you doing? How you doing, guys? I'm good, man. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for, for doing this, man. I appreciate you. Yes. Thanks for having me. Appreciate having Anytime. you Anytime. Chris, real, we got to get right into it, man. Sure. Because to catch a predator, that has been the... The 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 every joke in high school yes. has been <laughs> if you dated a girl yes. six months younger oh than you, my gosh. we were afraid Chris was going to jump come out. Oh, you jumping right into it. Six. We got you. You jumping right in. Got right, you. Go ahead. It's the only way. So <laughs> how do how does a show like to catch a predator even come about? Like how does that even happen? Well, you know, just last month. It was 17 years wow. from the very first episode that we did, and uh, we did it in Bethpage, Long Island. And mm-hmm. that first episode, we didn't uh, have the police involved. It was just <laughs> us. And the law enforcement made some cases afterwards. But, you know, we started to think, I started to think back then that if we could combine the work of this online watchdog group called Perverted Justice, right. you know, they would, they, they, worked on their own. They would have decoys go into chat rooms. And if an adult uh, made a date for sex, they would post that person's identity right on their website. Mm -hmm. And I found out about them and I said, well, if we could combine their ability to be decoys in chat rooms with our ability to wire a house with hidden microphones and cameras, the result could be very compelling. Mm -hmm. So I pitched it at NBC and they bought it. They bought into it and we put together a team of really talented producers and camera people to work on it and perverted justice did the decoy work and i was driving out there and i got stuck in traffic yeah yeah that happens and i started to started to think (laughs) man what if nobody shows up what if i've just wasted (laughs) tens of thousands of dollars of the network's money and with that the phone rings and it's my producer who says, where the hell are you? We've got two guys scheduled to show up in 45 minutes. So I get it. <laughs> this is a true story. This is, all, this is all straight up, straight up. So I get there. Was <laughs> yeah, it was ready to go. They're ready to go. So I get there, and we've got the transcripts laid out. And again, we're just, we didn't have it down to the system. We have it down to today behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first guy is going to come in. And I've got the transcripts, and all the transcripts are laid out on the dining room table. And I walk out there, and we had security there. Ronnie Knight, my security guy, was there, and, and uh, had taken precautions. We had it set up as secure as we thought we could. And the guy walks out. I'm going to confront him now, and I'm just trying to keep my heart, you know, from my throat in my chest. We get through it. The second guy comes in. We get through it. Third guy comes in, and now the transcripts are all mixed up. <laughs> so I walk out there to confront this guy with the wrong transcripts. So I said, oh, it says shit. here, you want to do this, that, and the other thing with a 14-year-old girl named Sue. No, that's not me. Excuse me. What's that? That's not me. 12-year-old named Joanne. No, that's not me. A 13-year-old named Beth. Yes, that's me. Okay. <laughs> he so, waited for you to get it right. <laughs> yeah. In the next two and a half days, we had 17 men surface in that investigation, including a New York City firefighter. Wow. Who was ultimately prosecuted in the case. So this airs, and it gets you know a pretty big response. And so we think, well, let's do it again. So we go to suburban Washington, D.C., in Herndon, Virginia. And 24 guys show up in a period of three days, including a rabbi, a teacher, military intelligence officer, all kinds of people, including a guy who showed up naked. 
<laughs> you got all the creeps. Talk about being locked and loaded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. ready to go. Ready so go. this guy then shows up the next day in our investigation again at a McDonald's. And I walk up to him, guy's name, never forget it, John Kennelly. His screen name was Special Guy 21, 29. <laughs> <laughs> and he was neither 29 nor that special. <laughs> so I confront him the second time, and, and I walk up to him, and I, I'm trying to think, what am I going to say to this guy? I'm trying to get it together so it's coherent because he's probably going to sprint. You know, it's outside McDonald's. And uh, I asked him the only thing I could think of, which is, you know, I've been doing this kind of work for 24 years at the time. I've never been at a loss for words, but I don't know what to ask you first. And so that airs, and it gets a lot of attention. Again, law enforcement did not do a parallel investigation. We did bring it to law enforcement for an interview after the fact, and law enforcement did prosecute some of these cases. But it became Man. very apparent at that point that it was the socially responsible thing to do. Uh, and also, from a production television standpoint, a more fulfilling thing for the viewers to involve ourselves with the police, with law enforcement to do a parallel investigation. So we did it. I took a little heat in the traditional journalistic community for working some thought too closely with police, but I was willing to, to do that because it was the socially responsible thing to do. So right about that time, we get a call from a uh, sheriff's department out in California, Riverside County Sheriff's Department, and, mm -hmm. and they want to partner. And that's when we did that investigation there. We went on, you know, to have hundreds of more fellows surface. We are back out there doing more investigations just uh, in the last uh, several weeks in Michigan, where, again, 17 years into this, we had a Michigan state prison guard. Wow. A guy who did contracting work in the mansion of the governor. See, that's just that's that's a guy who was a cop in Lebanon and a, a guy who was a babysitter. All these guys show up a, a babysitter. Now, wait, now, can I ask you something, though? Sure. So as the show starts to grow, you start getting traction. So now people know that when they're setting these up to go meet these underage girls and boys, they know you're a threat. You're like Batman now. So it's like they know you're out there looming. So <laughs> does, that, Shader. does that change the dynamic of the show? Because Well, it does. But look, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be straight up with you. I thought we'd only do this three, maybe four times. Mm -hmm. And I'd end up, you know, sitting there uh, half asleep on the kitchen counter like the Maytag <laughs> repairman with nothing to do. Right. But, I mean, consider that when we first started doing this, we merely had decoys in chat rooms on AOL and Yahoo. That's all there was. Mm -hmm. right. Today, with the explosion of social media platforms where kids can be contacted by predators, in a pandemic where kids are spending so much more time online, you've got interactive gaming, you've got Kick and uh, the dating apps and all kinds of ways that kids can be approached online by predators and and it's the crime is more prolific than ever before i'm convinced i believe that and when we see that i mean i mean 17 years into it think about that guys yeah 17 years and guys are still showing up yeah and, and they'll take that risk you know what you know what was really crazy because there was a point where you your face was so known that every everyone so, knew who you mean it's not now or? no <laughs> <laughs> like i haven't aged that much <laughs> once like because i'd imagine walking down the block had to be hard also as soon as you came out from the other room into the kitchen oh man they had to know like oh, man. oh shit this is <laughs> I, like I, i've seen an episode you came from the other room and the dude's looking for the exit. Oh shit, damn. So so the cops just going to get me. And you you got that poise about you, Chris. The same voice. He goes, too. he goes, "Oh no, I'm not going to do nothing to you. You're free to go." <laughs> I see that one. I see that one. It's like you can't like they don't teach that in acting class cuz I'm in no. there. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's the funny thing is, you know, clearly I'm known most for the predator investigations, but it, it's you know five percent of my portfolio. Right. You know, yeah. Out, yeah, of yeah. All the, out of all those Emmys, none of them are none for of predator. Them. They're for other investigative stories. Mm -hmm. But predator is it. You know that's what has become so iconic, if you will. And the lesson to me of it is, is as a journalist, as a reporter, that 
you know, if you take people inside a crime, right, and you take them on this journey of discovery where they see things they wouldn't normally see and they hear things they wouldn't normally hear and you try to get in the mind of one of these guys, you can prevent other people from becoming a victim, right? Right. So it would be easy for me to just jump out of a closet and create 10 seconds of dramatic video. The, the key to this thing <laughs> is to, to get this guy to talk to you. Now, he knows he's in trouble. I know he's in trouble. He's not sure at first whether I'm the mad dad, the police detective, or Chris Hansen. And he's sorting through it, and we've got the element of surprise on our side, obviously. But, you know, I'm trying to literally and legitimately, genuinely understand what the hell was going inside this guy's head that brought him to this situation. And I think yeah. at some point, in most of the cases, they sort of figure that out. And in many cases, they let it go. You know, they talk to you. It's one of the interesting things about doing the podcast we have mm -hmm. up now, uh, uh, Predators I've Caught is that um, I get to go back over the cases we've already done. Right. And it, mm -hmm. it even makes me better doing the cases we're doing today because it, you relive these moments right. and, and you know, you're talking about something that maybe 17, 16, 15 years ago. It's like, wow, you know, that's what this guy said. And then we get to find out what this guy has been up to since then, what's happened to him and what his life has been like. Um, and it, it's, it's been a very, it's been a fascinating exercise for me. And I think, I think people are enjoying it. Um, and, and working with a great team, uh, let's put it together. I think, right. I think this week we drop episode eight. Oh, with, nice. Uh, oh, cool. Jeff, Jeff Sokol, the pizza guy. Very famous <laughs> episode. So, okay. Man. Chris, have you ever been nervous during these uh, events? Oh yeah. It's always, you know, look, if you're not on your game, if you're not a little anxious or apprehensive or focusing on things it's you know you're not you're not going to be at your best so under normal circumstances you're not just thinking of the question or how you're going to approach this guy you had the transcripts right you've been able to go over them so you have sort of a profile of who this person is because our team is so good at background checks and using computers we, we know more about the guy than he thinks we know so we catch him off guard and then it's about managing the environment the situation you know you're looking at his hands you're looking if he's twitchy you're looking if he's grabbing his pocket that's wild. you're thinking in the worst case scenario where do i go what do i do while oh that's cool every week is, on the show yeah this guy right <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly yeah the rolling thunder i don't know where it's gonna crackle you know? so but you know in, in the ones we did in michigan we have a couple up on the on the youtube channel i have a seat with chris hansen and and uh, some more that are going to go and uh in the new television version of, of the Predator investigation, but we had to change it up a little bit because of COVID. You know, we had to have different protocols in place. So we actually, in the ones, the most recent ones, we did them in a hotel room as opposed to a house. And I think now that things are settling back down, we'll be able to, in the future investigations, go, uh, you know, more traditional with it. I think I think people like that. that yeah. be, oh, my bad. You go first. You go first. Because I'm, I'm just thinking... Being that you don't know who, I mean, you only could do so much background check, but right. you don't know, and, and I'm sure you guys have security like you mentioned, but you don't know who who's really coming through the door. Right. You, you don't know if these guys are armed or not. So given that element, what is the scariest case that you guys have had, at least in your memory, that on To my, Catch a Predator? That was my well, memory. I think in the you know few years ago, we were in Fairfield, Connecticut. And we had a guy come in and we knew that he um, worked for one of the cable companies. So he's in people's homes. We knew that he wanted to take a 13-year-old girl, quote unquote, for a driving lesson in a parking lot in his SUV. And I think we may have known that he was on the list for the police academy in Connecticut. Wow. But what we found out ultimately when the, when the Fairfield Police Department tossed his car they found uh, a video camera, rope, duct tape, and a loaded handgun in Yo, the car. That's beyond but what's gonna, What's going to happen on that car driving lesson if we had not caught him? Exactly. And a 13-year-old girl was there. Exactly. You know what's crazy? Not to mention the fact that this guy's in people's homes hooking up their cable on a daily basis. 
Yo, that shit irks me. Just That's hearing crazy. you even talk I mean, about it, about I feel that. like I'm watching an episode of the show. Like, you, know, yeah. <laughs> you, got, you got the voice going too, so I feel like... Got me all I Chris Hansen mode here. Like yeah. like yeah. like yeah. like yeah. like, I was like, damn, what is going to happen when she gets the call? I couldn't even attract. Like, I wanted to keep listening. <laughs> what you say, Lex? I'm silent over here. Now I'm silent because I'm just... It was like watching a TV show. It's like I'm watching an episode of the show. I'm like, damn. It's like an... Like a very... Well, imagine being one of my kids when they were in high school. Oh, man. They acted up and then... Oh, they had a rather... I whipped him than have to sit there for 45 minutes. Yeah. That's when you. That's when you tell him. Oh no, Man. Yeah. You're, you're free to go to your room. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what's going to yeah. happen yeah. when you get there. You know, with that yeah. poise, you're in trouble. Is what's going to happen? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's funny because you know, my two uh, sons are now in the business. One's uh, in television, film production, behind nice. the scenes, and, and uh, he worked on some of the shows. In fact, he was one of the cameramen on the last Predator investigation. But okay. the other one's on air. He's a reporter in Oklahoma City, and he's working his way up the ladder. But that's cool. When when we were first doing Predator, you know, they were in high school. And, oh, you know, in that man. part of the world, it was no big deal to have a dad on television in high school <laughs> because they went to school with kids whose dads were CEOs yeah. and, right, right, right. you know, big time guys. Talk and, that money you know, talk. I like that. Keep going. I mean, just keep keep going. So yeah. <laughs> it was all it was all, you know, just another job until. South Park did a Chris Hansen Predator episode. Oh, that and really then the I top. was the coolest dad. <laughs> Everybody in the school watched South Park. Yeah, that, oh, yeah. That South Park. Oh, yeah. Everybody knew who you were. Yeah. yeah. And it all going on then. That's crazy. Because <laughs> when you put yourself in their shoes, it's like, wow. So your dad's Chris Hansen, huh? You're a sophomore in high school, huh? And your girlfriend's a freshman, huh? That's what you're doing. That's what you want to do. My dad will be by at 355. To, That's back when everybody knew out. who he yeah. was. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Chris Hansen. It went, it went in that order. I'm not even playing. Everybody knew who he was. It's crazy. The compilations on YouTube, I don't even know if you've seen them. They all have like over 10 million views each. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, well, the, I mean, you know, the the latest episodes we did are on my youtube channel they you know people people like to see them it's definitely something because i think what it really comes Except down to the is, predators of course yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> of course right but i think what it really comes down to is like people didn't you really touched you exposed this when like a lot of people didn't think this was a thing and now like you well, were saying it's like it's grown so much I, people still can't believe it's still something that goes on well i imagine i mean i didn't think we'd be still doing this 17 years into it you know, yeah, right. I, I truly thought it was, you know, it, it was never designed as a whole or thought of envisioned as a whole standalone series. It was envisioned as a segment right. of Dateline ABC. That and in fact, wow. when That's we first did it, it, it kind of sat on the shelf for a minute because they were trying to figure out how to promote it. And I finally said, well, here's how you promote it. There's a guy knocking on your back door who wants to have sex with your 13 year old daughter. And tonight we're <laughs> going to tell you how to stop that from happening. That's right. how you promote it. Oh, you have dude. everyone's <laughs> attention when you lead in with that. Yes. And and also, and I understand what you mean when you say it was meant to be a segment because essentially we know what's going to happen every episode. So right. how do you yeah. keep something like that fresh? We know what's going to happen every episode, but we, we're glued into to, to our TV screens every year. We can't turn the channel. I mean, the scenarios well, are different. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a combination of things. It's, you know, it's watching the inevitable clash of somebody who was intent on, you know, committing rape, statutory rape, um, with everything that goes into it, uh, from the transcripts to the arrival, to the confrontation, to the arrest. You don't often get to see that. In real life, you can see actors, you know, portray things on a on a show, but you don't get to see real life that way. Right. You know, it's the ultimate uh, experience of immersion into a crime as it's being committed. Yes. And I thought about this over and over again, and, and I wish I could tell you that I was brilliant and knew what was going to ultimately transpire with all this. We just set out to do a story and. You know, a lot of these lines that have become somewhat iconic have a seat or no right over there. They came out of necessity. For instance, if you've got somebody who's short, who is out of the camera frame mm -hmm. and right. the camera can't be adjusted without disrupting the whole flow of the production, you need that guy's butt in that stool. 
Right. Otherwise, he's not going to be in the camera shot. Yeah, he's not going to be in the so shot. That's what a line so came these, from. So these lines, yeah, this is, you need to have a seat. You need to have a seat right over there. Right <laughs> over, right over there. And it's, it's, it, part of it is controlling the environment. You exactly. Know, so it doesn't get unwieldy. I mean, there were a few times that I thought, oh, no, this is going to go sideways. You know, we had a guy who was leaving a house and um, – he was putting his shoes on and, and got confused with the law enforcement commands to come out. And of course, you know, he's okay raping a 13 year old girl, but he took his shoes off not to dirty the floor on the way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Right. So priorities. Around. Yeah. Priorities. Right. So he's around trying to get his shoes on. So they, they taser him to get him out the door and only one of the prongs hits. So he comes back in the house. And so I'm jumping out of the way, you know, they're not going to mess with him this time. I mean, they're going to take him. Right. As they should, you know, wow. and uh, they haul them out of there. But that all takes place inside that house. Um, we've had a, we had another occasion in the very first investigation. We had a guy who was uh, rangy and he was coming at me and going away and, you know, passive aggressive. And, and you know, we're, we couldn't get him to leave. And finally, Ronnie, and I, my security guy said, OK, time to go. You know, and then we don't know if they're coming back. Wow. See, when we do one with a parallel law enforcement investigation, investigation we have more control. You right. know? For instance, the, the episode that drops tomorrow, Jeff Sokol, we knew he was coming down from Boston right. after a sexually charged conversation with a 13-year-old girl. We knew that he was going to stop at a certain pizza joint on the way so the cops could be there and say, okay, he's leaving with the pizza. We knew he was going to show up in 10 minutes. Yeah. So we're mm. ready. We have a profile. We have the chats. Uh, we had an onside decoy to have the initial conversation that, you know, really creepy attempt to go hug the girl. Um, and then I walk out. So, you know, it, it as we've continued to do these things, we've learned, you know, how to better anticipate the, you know, the different things that could happen. Yeah, that's like... Honestly, this was my first introduction. Like, I thought this was like just jokes in high school until To Catch a Predator was on TV and I actually seen it come to fruition. But it's, it, I think this is really big, especially nowadays. You know, we hear a lot about sex trafficking because like, oh, yeah, like we said earlier, we don't know what's going to happen if these girls actually do get in the car with these guys or, you know, I uh, I'm developing another show right now with um some sex trafficking victims and That's they're crazy. not who you think you would see as a sex trafficking victim. It wasn't, uh, we're not talking about, who do you think uh, I would see as a sex trafficking? I don't know who I think. Well, I don't know, but I think, I think <laughs> like there's I this think image. Him? I think, I think there's, no, I, I think there's, <laughs> there's <laughs> image. There's, there's this image of, um, <laughs> see the pants underprivileged, <laughs> you know, girls oh, in third world countries being recruited against their will or being induced to do one job and being caught up in another, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think are being forced to work in a, in a, in the sex industry in the United States. Some of these girls are, are just, you know, in the wrong place at the wrong time and get hooked up into this, right. you know, mm. so from, from good homes, from American families, from all walks of life. You know, there is no one profile. Any cashiers and grocery stores on there? Well, I, I think there's, there, <laughs> it, it, nobody's immune from it. No, I know I, I know that, but he got a cashier fetish. I just wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, you know, it's, it's so interesting to me, though, because it's like, like you know, everybody saw us in high school, obviously. So and when you in, when you were a kid in school, you know, you look at the comedic element to it. But it's almost like, you know, you're using I don't even know if you're trying to use the comedic element. It's just kind of there. But to touch well, on a larger issue that's like present, you know? Yeah. And, and look, undeniably, there have been dark darkly humorous moments mm -hmm. in the entire thing. I mean, there's, there's no way around it. Uh, and, and trust me, there have been times when, you know, the guy has left and been hauled away. And I look at the crew, I said, did we really just see what I thought we saw? And, and I've, you know, I, I, I try to, to see the dark humor in it. And, and that's why I've, you know, done skits with Conan O'Brien for the Emmys and, mm -hmm. you know, lent my voice to some, you know, the Simpsons or, you know, and, and done a lot of, uh, you know, stuff with uh, Funny or Die over the years. And, you know, you know look, it, it, at first you want to say, well, wait, this is very serious. I shouldn't be making fun of it. But then you realize that by having a sense of humor, albeit dark, you can 
continue to bring attention exactly, to a yeah. very important issue. Yeah. And so if, if people want to poke fun at me or poke fun at that, that that's cool. I'm a, I'm grown up. I can take it. I think but as best- long as it goes back to the central issue and the awareness exactly. and the dialogue continues, I'm cool with it. I was going to say, I mean, even so you had some of the one liners on the show, too. It's like you were saying somebody would like walk in with pizza. And you'd be like, cheese is the only thing we're going to be talking about tonight. Like, you know, you say something like that. So that's well, but that's, it goes back to it goes back to your your earlier question about keeping it fresh. You know, right. people know that it's and we've had this discussion, you know, do we change the set? What do we do? Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it is, a, you know, it's the coverage of a crime in its commission and a law enforcement uh, activity after I get done doing what I do. So, uh, yeah, you, you, you try to be smart and intelligent and do each one differently. But, yeah, I mean, sometimes when you say something like that, you know, pizza isn't the only thing on the menu tonight. Or, you know, <laughs> See, that and, was better and, than what I said. I See, that was actually really good. Yeah, exactly. But it, 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 it jars one. the guy a little bit and it catches him off guard and it makes him tell you what really was going on in his mind and what led him to be there in this very difficult, bad situation. See, you know what's crazy? I I, I cannot stay serious. So I'm thinking, like, then <laughs> you ask a dude, yeah, so pizza ain't the only thing on the menu tonight. <laughs> and, like, me, first thing I was like, no, nah, I was hoping to eat, some, eat a little bit of pussy with that pizza, oh goddamn. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> but, that, but it's messed up. It's too far. I know it's messed up because oh we're gosh. talking about underage. But, well, you know, the thought that, that's what I was thinking, man. man. I'm fucked up. I'm sick. <laughs> that's why you not on this. We got to edit that. Nah, he- <laughs> I think so. I'm the head of HR I think so. Yeah. I think it's so. It's jokes, man. But that's what he's talking about. Bringing that comedic element to things like when it comes to this. So not in that largest, form. Yeah. <laughs> to that like a, not in that form. Uh, Chris, maybe in a different the whole way. Set that dying. might be a little too much for a 9 p.m. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At least on broadcast. Yo, too, I would have had, had, ca- had the cameraman camera shaking. Yo, he's, with, he's special. Yeah. He's special. Get him out of here. Chris, can I ask you, though? Do you have a Absolutely. specific episode or moment or like doesn't have to be one where it was funny or dark, but one just that sticks out in your mind or like when you even when you rewatch it, you're just like, wow, like like I remember that one. Or Yeah, this. like if someone were to ask you about um, an episode or something, what, w- what would be the first episode that like comes to mind? Yeah. Well, you know, the, I think it's a hundred way tied for first. And I, I don't want to make it sound like a cop off, but they're all different and they're all you know, compelling in their own ways. The rabbi, obviously. I mean, who'd I've ever seen think? That one. I mean, in, in Washington, D.C., I honestly thought we might see a politician or somebody who worked for a politician. But mm-hmm. I didn't think we'd see uh, a clergyman, right? Mm-hmm. I also didn't think we'd see a guy walking naked. But, you know, that was one of two <laughs> that we saw. I mean, in New York. Uh, you know, <laughs> we've had teachers In New York, that's in. not uncommon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've had teachers walk in. And that's disturbing on a couple wow. different occasions. Um one that really blew my mind is when we were in Connecticut, a guy comes in to meet a 13 year old boy and I walk out and the guy looks at me and says, no, Chris, no, Chris, it's not what it seems. Now the crew all thinks that, the, the, no, listen to this. The crew all thinks that this fellow knows me from TV. Turns out this was a guy I had met on the train oh, commuting no. from New York city to Connecticut. Wow. <laughs> when I, I used to live in Connecticut for many years. And, and so, um, yeah, Charles Lawrence. And so, and I'm trying to, I didn't see him in a couple of years. He wasn't a buddy or anything, but he was kind of, you know, on the fringes of a group of guys who had, from different, you know, professions who would, you know, shoot the breeze on the train and have a beer, you know, between New York and Connecticut. And, and in fact, it was him. And I called a buddy of mine from there. I said, and because I couldn't remember his name, I said, who's the guy? And I explained the situation and he said, Charles Lawrence. I said, oh, my God. I, he said, why? He said, he just walked into one of my investigations. Oh, man. So I contacted him years later, and I said, you know, I hope you pulled it all together. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, well, he, he did two years. He, he did two years, you know. But and, wait a minute. And, uh, Super awkward. If, if Chris, no, I'm just going to be honest with you, man. If you're one of my friends, what am I doing this for? Like, you know what I'm saying? Well, no, the- it's, it, you shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. And he like, tried to say, well, I thought it said 18 and 13. And I said, well, you found the address okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your, your eyes weren't that bad, Charles. See, so, that's the, that's the and, then, and then, of course, you know, once that happens, everybody comes out of the word and say, well, I I saw him do this or I saw him do that or this is what he's written, whatever. Sure. So he declined my uh, request for a follow-up interview and that was the end of that. But it, it um, 
it um, it was mind boggling. And it goes down to the central issue. And the, the thing that I always tell people is that when I'm asked, what do all these guys have in common? And what they really have in common is they don't stand out of a crowd for the most part. You know, there could be the guy standing next to you at the drugstore on a Saturday morning at the Just checkout like that. line. That's that that's so crazy to me. That yeah. the fact that these are everyday people. So with that I, being said, any celebs, you don't have to say names. Have have well, you, I mean there's celebs in the news right now. Yeah, you know, that's what that's, that's, yeah. you saw where Ar- I was going with that. Army Army Hammer and Marilyn Manson and not necessarily the predators as we see predators under age, but you know, Some sexual impropriety or allegations of and and uh, obviously you know, we saw the Weinstein case, the Epstein right, case. Right. The, I mean, a prime example is the one of the new series we have, actually both new series that I've got out now on Discovery Plus. We've got Onision in real life. This guy was a YouTuber who is accused of sexual impropriety and harassment and all kinds of things involving underage girls and, and questionable questionable activity with, with uh, women of age. And then Peter Nygaard, who is a... Uh, wealthy fashion magnate who is now accused of human trafficking and okay. raping potentially thousands of women going back 50 years, including, you know, underage girls in the Bahamas, the uh, victims who we interviewed for the, for the series, uh, in some cases, even forcing them, according to some investigators, to have abortions and harvesting stem cells from the aborted fetuses to inject in himself Wait, what? as what? some sort of fountain okay. of youth. It's, it's, it's in the Dang. new series on Discovery Plus. Check it out. It's uh, unseemly, the Peter Nygaard investigation. Wow. On Discovery Plus. We got, I got to yeah. check that out. I so got check it. that out. That's, I mean, we were, I mean, I literally worked on that two years with uh, Blackfin Productions and to put that together for Discovery Plus. And, wow. and Onision, you know, Onision in real life, it takes you into that dark and creepy world that sometimes uh, you get into when you explore YouTube. And, and uh, yeah. it just it, it, to see the stuff he was doing and the victims and, and all that, and there's more to come on both of those because, you know, once you do a series like that, you know, it, it – you know, more people come forward, obviously, but it's, uh, right. it's, it's, it's that been an eyeful. said too, I guess, you, like I said, you know, you, you really do touch on a lot of like the darker subjects when it comes to a lot of this, but you really were the first one to bring it to light. So do you see yourself as like a pioneer when it comes to this? Cause I can't really think, I mean, I'm sure people, there has been investigative journalists tackling this before you, but you definitely popularized it to a point where everybody started looking at it. And also, well, Chris is in tune to the streets. They know they're not really in tune to the streets. Chris is out here in the street. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm a street reporter at heart. You know, it wasn't like I was uh, from the block. No, I'm serious. I mean, I, you know, I came up through the ranks. You know, Lansing, Michigan, Tampa, Detroit for ten years. I grew up in Detroit. Um, now you said Detroit. You know, Detroit. So, he said that was different. He, yeah. he said it different. <laughs> He's like, "Fool, yeah. thank God I'm out of here." <laughs> No, no, I love Detroit. I, I still. You, know, you don't have to say that because we're. No, recording. but I do. I, 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 I'm very. I, Detroit's my town, man. I, you know, I don't walk Shout around with the Detroit. Yankees hat on. I got a Tigers hat on. You know. But, uh, but anyway, I think when you when you have experience in a urban setting covering predominantly crime or politics, which in Detroit was criminal so much of the time, <laughs> that uh, you know, you, you just you have a sensibility about you where. You know, you can deal with that sort of thing and, you know, you get to the nitty gritty of it because, you know, that's the only kind of reporting, you know, um, and you need to be a little streetwise to mm-hmm. carve out information and to craft your questions in a way that will elicit a response. And you need it's all about being, you know, streetwise and nimble and paying attention to what you're doing, you know. So what do you have to say to the people who say, that that they shouldn't be arrested because they're speaking to decoys. They're not actually speaking to thirteen year old women. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that, that, that's we know. I mean, the case law is very clear. I mean, yeah, yeah. That I, it, that if if you know if it's it's not entrapment and never ever in any of these cases, four hundred or so that we've dealt with, uh, has there ever been a successful entrapment defense? It isn't entrapment. It, it, it entrapment is you know, and I'm I'm putting it layman's terms, and you guys know, is when they create an opportunity and somebody takes advantage of it that they wouldn't normally, it induces them to commit a crime they wouldn't normally commit on their own. This is an image of somebody who's clearly underage, 
who says they're underage. Mm-hmm. And the, the decoy never introduces the idea of sex first. They have to make the first approach. They have to make the first suggestion of sex. It has to be clear. The fact is, the crime in most states and in most cases is committed online before they even show up. Right. The house They've the already hotel. committed a crime already. Yeah. Right. It's, it's done. I mean, you've got the transcript right there. That, I mean, what I do is the TV part of it. Right. And yeah, yeah. while that's important, I mean, I've never been called to testify in a in a in a, in a court case up to this point. I mean, well, the, the it's, all, it's all on camera. Everything's documented too. So it's right, like, exactly. I mean, yeah. they can, people can get it. And, R- respectfully, if I was a prosecutor, I'm gonna subpoena you because I I want you on the stand with your notes. <laughs> Boom. That's all I need for shits and right. giggles. But they have they have the transcripts, and and I think the prosecutors, you know, many of these cases go down to you know. Please. Plea bargain. You know, they, Nobody's they plead, going to They plead yeah. guilty. Right, yeah. Right. I mean, there have been some trial. I mean, the rabbi went to trial. Wow. He went to trial, went to a bench trial in federal court oh, thinking yeah. that he could get off. Ended up, the judge found, the judge found him guilty. And not only did he find him guilty. <laughs> the damn fool. He found that he lied on the stand and, and did an upward departure in the sentencing guidelines and slammed it with six and a half years. He's been in and out five times, I think, that rabbi, Holy because he can't shit. keep out of trouble. For those of y'all that don't don't know what a bench trial is, that's where it's no jury. The judge makes the decision on the fly, just like that. Well, after you present all your evidence, oh. yeah. Oh, well, he's right. smart. He's no, I, I just know, like, <laughs> yeah. Why does he know the judicial yeah, system? Yeah, I know. So yeah, well, so well. Right? <laughs> so, 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 um, so right. Wait, 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 wait. You don't have to go through it explain. to be educated. I can explain. <laughs> yeah, I even knew that. Him, he just he, he see he, he knows something. I he even knew that. He through it. <laughs> see, in high school, they had this this weird class. It's called, um, what is it called? Social studies. I did my homework. That's what <laughs> yeah. I did. Yeah, right. yeah, okay. They teach all of this. Yeah, Chris, you guys homework. don't yeah, listen. They <laughs> teach very basic homework. Stuff. Right? Yeah. 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 Homework. Yeah, yeah that's just like you. You want a pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheese ain't the only thing you're going to be eating today. Good yeah, good you're trying to yeah. do it. Low food, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good line. Chris, got, Chris had a good, really good line on that show. There's a lot of the compilations I would watch. I would listen just to hear what you had to say, like in the moment, I'm like, wow, that was good. <laughs> How you know all his lines? I'm not, it was everybody was watching him. His like, homework, Chris. Exactly, Chris. He just wanted to autograph. Can you <laughs> sign <laughs> one through the? Sure. <laughs> we have we have, have, we have t-shirts. We have merch. Come through the front door. I feel like, yeah, you had to grab him by his hood. Get over here, <laughs> this guy. White leather wearing. <laughs> oh my god. Everybody, everybody knew who he was. Yes. It's on the internet, if you didn't know who Chris was, you your eyes. Well, no, but I'm telling you, it's crazy. Have a seat. <laughs> Why don't you have a seat right over there? That was the line. <laughs> yeah, and that if was you it. You heard that? Uh-oh. Yeah, <laughs> somebody. It's showtime. <laughs> it's curtains. It, <laughs> see, he, oh, I like when people talk shit. Yeah, I like that. Chris. That shit funny. Said, I'm a stand. <laughs> it's really what it was. And then you would actually get that. It's, as soon as people on the show would even hear that line, they knew what it was. They would run. You, you had, you well, had we had on one on guy. That. We were in the Jersey Shore. He's probably, I don't know, I think it was 25 years old. They walked in and he said, you're Chris Hansen. I said, well, yes, before right? I could even start the whole questioning. And I said, well, how did you know that? He goes, well, I watch the episodes all the time. I, miss them. I, I watch them on the internet. I said, do you even get the trouble you've just walked into? And it was almost like he was, he was, uh, you know, happy to be on it, that this was his big oh break. Of some, Spike, he said Jersey Shore, Spike. <laughs> Spike. I said, this is not how you want to be on TV. So I wrote a book on the whole thing. I was on Jon Stewart and he joked, he said, uh, he had the book right there and some pictures of the Predators were on it. He said, hey mom, good news. Uh, my face is on the cover of a book. The bad news is it's Chris Hansen's book. <laughs> oh my gosh. No. Man. So, Yeesh. Lord, I'm as we sp- as you mentioned, you know, a lot of these guys are only getting like two years. Yeah, I mean, the, the rabbi. Well, some got, have gotten more. The rabbi got more. We've had guys, you know, depending on their previous criminal history, get up to 24 years. Um, yeah. But, you know, and look, in some cases, you know, people always say, who are these guys? And and are all they, you know, do you have to lock them up forever? Well, they're, they're different guys. You know, they're, they're a younger group, I think, who, you know, are socially inept. And they think, okay, she may be 14 now. But in seven years, you know, if we're still together, the age difference won't matter. And, 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 and those guys, if they're not hardcore offenders, what they did was wrong. It's a felony. They should be punished for it. But they could probably have a low level of punishment, some probation, registration as a sex offender and monitoring. And you scare the hell out of them and they'll never do it again. Then there are the hardcore heavy hitters where mm-hmm. nothing is going to change. 
you know, they're going to go back and do it again. And then there's Jeez. some guys who are someplace in the middle, and it, that becomes murkier, murkier and more difficult to figure out in terms of punishment. But, but we've had some guys get some pretty serious penalties and, you know, some probation. So with that being said, have you had any repeat offenders? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, the rabbi is back in, uh, my understanding <laughs> yeah, is now, again, right, for like the fifth time, that, for, violating, time. for violating probation. Wow. wow. Yeah. I mean, this guy was in a counseling session, and part of his probation was he wasn't supposed to have a device that could access the internet. And yeah. he's in the counseling <laughs> session that. with the counselor, with the therapist, and the, the parole officer walks in to check on him. And the illegal phone goes off in his pocket. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, they banned him really, from the you can't whole even go internet. to the therapy. You can't, you can't go to the therapist without having your illegal device with you. <laughs> and all I had to do is behave for like five years and be done. And then he could try to carve out his regular life again. He and, just and needed a taste. Of that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So what's the Wi Fi password? Do you, <laughs> yeah. do you, do you think <laughs> that, do you think that, some of them could use help instead of like being punished. help. This motherfucker just asked for the Wi-Fi. No, no, no. But I mean, like, some, He's I don't a know. Rabbi. Not yeah, the I think, rabbi. I think, so, I think, I think some can. I, I think some of the younger ones we have seen, um, and we've seen them, and we'll talk about them in upcoming episodes of uh, Predators I've Caught, uh, have turned their lives around and uh, not reoffended and have a regular life. Um, I think some have had to have intensive therapy and treatment and monitoring to get there. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, the Internet has allowed a certain segment of society to blur the line between fantasy and reality. People say things they wouldn't normally say, you know, face to face. They say it online. They show the pictures of themselves. They wouldn't, you know, pass around, you know, I, I tell my, my son, who's the reporter, I said, you know, there will be people who send you stuff. But when I was your age, they had to take a Polaroid and put an envelope, put a stamp on it, send it to the TV station. Security had to go through it. And so it, it, oh my it was, well, it was like, several levels Polaroid, before you could yeah. see that Polaroid. It's a Polaroid. But, I think they got that at Macy's, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so young. So, so today it comes in the Internet and you have to monitor it and be careful. But mm. what, what has happened is it's allowed people to do things and say things and get to a certain level that they couldn't get to before, you know, and then they blur this line between fantasy and reality and they act out on it. And suddenly we see them knocking on our door. Yeah. Right. Well, real quick, do you find that people are the, the, and you're in the new series predators I've caught, do you find that people are willing to talk to you about the, what happened in the past? Or you find most people just like, I don't want to talk to this guy. I don't want to see him. They probably most check. most of them don't want to talk to me. I mean, we can find out information about them. Obviously, that's you know our use of the internet. But interestingly, we now have uh, discussions going with family members of mm. some wow. of the predators I've caught. So yeah, because they had to it, cut them off too. The family can't. Well, mess with it's them. it's right. So it's what I always call the collateral damage, and you know I write about it in the book. And, and it's to me, it's one of the more fascinating and tragic examples here. Is you got the guy who, you know. Maurice Wolin, who's, you know, recently passed away, was a doctor at the time, 48, 49 years old, who was on the cutting edge of, the cutting edge of curing cancer at a, you know, company on the West Coast. And here he is on a Saturday afternoon after chatting up two separate decoys, 13, 14 years old, you know, showing up for a date at our sting house. So, you know, suddenly this woman's married to a doctor. His daughters are you know, I think they have this upstanding cutting edge guy, medical man as a father, and he's shows up in one of our investigations. I mean, that that's a hell of a Damn. thing to go through. And I think it's 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 incredibly compelling and interesting to talk to people who've had to experience that tragedy. I mean, they're they're victims. Definitely you know, in this thing. Definitely. I definitely think they are that they're victims because then when you think about it, we can't have this guy, whoever, who's been convicted of. We, we seen him on Dateline NBC. We can't invite him over to Thanksgiving. Yeah, <laughs> We can't. Exactly. I, I don't want him eat. passing me the sweet potatoes. Yeah, no, yeah. no, I'm good. Matter of fact, <laughs> who invited him? <laughs> it don't even can't be like. No, he can't have no candy. It's yet. probably difficult for family though. Like that. It's got to be. Well, how do you oh, talk yeah. to that guy? I yeah, can't yeah, talk yeah. to him. It's what? Like, what are you supposed Ain't to no talking. Yeah, I'm good at cutting people off. That's why. Hey, he that's too. cool. Drop like a fly. It's 
But Chris, I, I believe nobody knows a predator's mind state like you. Who has more training in this than you? So if you could go inside a predator's head for a second, don't mm-hmm. stay there. Just go there for a second. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a scary, oh scary place. Just a second. <laughs> it's a scary place. <laughs> what do you think goes through their mind when they start a journey, like something like this, like a journey? Like, I, I don't think anybody goes, where the young bitches at tonight? You know, well, I think I mean? there are. I think there are people who do that. I yeah. think there are people wow. who are pedophiles who oh have goodness. this predilection, this condition, and they go after kids. That's what, whether it's a a, a wiring problem or whether it's a, a an experience in their childhood where they're acting out. I think there are people who can never be cured of this. And when you talk to those people in prison, when psychiatrists. Uh, whom I've interviewed over the years, talked to him in prison, they will tell you two things. One, there is very definitely a link between child pornography and offenders. And two, if they got caught doing it once, they probably did it two other times. All right. right. So that's one yeah. category here. There's yeah. another category that's who, what I said about girls that without the internet, <laughs> wouldn't yeah. act out. You know, that's the guy I was talking about earlier. Then there's the younger fellows who know it's wrong, but do it anyway, thinking, well, I can get away with it. You know, um, but yeah, some people cannot be cured of this. I'm convinced. You know, I I worked with the elder the elderly for a long time, and because Welly has said he didn't think that people. Oh shit. <laughs> no, because he didn't think that people would normally say like, "Where are the young?" Quote unquote, "Where are the young bitches at?" Um, there are a lot of elderly men that I've worked with that have said, "What are they good for? Like, what are the what else are you know you young people good for?" You know, he, yeah, because, you know, he wants to be cleaned or, groom or you know, touched or whatever. And there are a lot of them that say, like, oh, I like them young. I like them 15. Like, they say this. Wow. And, you know, we can't say anything. We just take it. You know, we just listen and we're like. Because you old to him. So. Yeah, but what, excuse me. <laughs> to, to him. <laughs> listen, I'm just to I him. look 19 to them, okay? Oh yeah, that's right? too you know old. It's too old. It is too old. But they still mention young. They talk that's about crazy. children in many ways that I'm not going to mention because it's kind of disturbing. It's kind of disturbing. I hear things like that every single day wow. when I'm there. But yeah, it's very common. It's that little sentence. It's something so stupid and like naive, not naive, but like ignorant. You know, they say a lot of things like that. Well, so what what shocks common. me always, you know, and I approach this stuff as a, as a parent, um, you know, even though I uh, my job is to be a reporter, but how could anybody who actually has kids do this? And I've yes. seen it over yeah. and over I see them, like, their family visit them, you know, and I'm just like, uh, it, it, little it, it did boggles they know this my mind. Service. That you could act this way when you have children of your own. And, you know, they actually have done this in front of their family members, like their daughter will come visit them. And they have said stuff like this and they'll just be like, Dad, stop. Or like, you know, that's disgusting. Don't say that. And then they'll ask me to leave the room. You know, it's happened a lot of times in like, you know, the, the five years that I've been working with them. Even well, longer than that. Well, now, when that, if that happens to you, you'd be like, ha, 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 ha. Have a seat. <laughs> See, I don't just still want a Chris line. Yeah, I don't. Even, I don't even entertain. Or just it. call me and I'll head over. You know? yeah. There you go. I don't, Chris I don't is smooth. You peep that? We'll get the get a cameraman and a sound guy with a boom mic and hop on in. And a cheese pizza. That was like five a, lot of, a lot of good pornos started exactly that way. <laughs> a cameraman, a yeah. boom mic, and a box of pizza. <laughs> I see. I used to subscribe to that network. I know. You know what? Though? It was 20 a month. You know what, though? I've experienced stuff when I was young, too. Okay. <laughs> I've experienced stuff when I was young, too. And then, wow. um, you know, just seeing it in the, you know, facility that I work in, just seeing it, you know, even being around them, taking care of them, you know, in the past, like I've done in their home and stuff like that. Um, seeing that, you know, it makes me afraid to even have children. I don't have children yet. I'm, like, afraid. Of course, it's based on experience, too, but... It scares me. I don't even know what type of precaution to take or anything like well, that. Well, I think it starts, and I tell, you know, I speak a lot to, to groups, um, you know, on this topic. And, and you started in early age with an age-appropriate conversation. And it, it goes something like this, I think, in the beginning, which is, look, there are adults uh, online who try to trick kids. And kids don't like to be tricked. Right. And so they'll react at a certain level. And as they get older and 
you know, based upon your own judgment as a parent, knowing your child, you have to step up that conversation. But what's shocking to me, and I've watched this play out in real life, is the grooming process and how somebody who's skilled at grooming can, you know, be a stranger on a Tuesday, but by Friday be sending a webcam and a, you know, cell phone Just like uh, to his intended target and, you know, getting under this kid's skin and, and into the kid's emotions and developing this this personality. And, and we saw it in the Onision investigation. Here's a guy who was targeting, in some cases, vulnerable girls, you know, at a vulnerable age and having them come out to his home. And showing him all his stuff. And then it came down to, you know, the abuse, the harassment, the bullying and and allegations of sexual impropriety. So, you know, you see these guys in positions of power and, and with a media spotlight, whether it's on television or radio or uh, in the in the digital world. And, and there is a pattern of abuse there in some cases. And it's it's disturbing. And, and some of these kids are, you know, from solid households. They just are there at a vulnerable time in their life. And predators have a way of sensing that. You ever feel like, though, like you, you like this is you've done this. You said for now the show was like 17 years ago. You ever feel like like, like how do you how do you mentally get away from all this? You know, do you, there's, you can't be in this for too long. There's no way you, you, well, you, you study I, I think, creeps. you know. That's, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 you know, we've take, taken breaks between, you know, predator investigations and, I've, you know, you go work on something else uh, for a bit. But it, you know, it really does, for me, all come back to um, crime and investigative stuff and that sort of thing. I mean, I, I get a chance, you know, on Cameo or something like that to dabble in, a, uh, in humor and have a little fun with it uh, in a way that I don't normally do in my day job. But, but yeah, I mean, you, you know, I take a break just like everybody else does with okay, exercise good, good. and outside interests and, you know, close family. And, but it is, it's, it's somebody asked me once, do you ever, have you ever sought therapy to deal with it all? And, and I said, well, you know, I, I keep it dark and sealed just like, you know, where, where I can't come out and harm me, but uh, I'm only half joking about that. But it, it's, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I, I've, I've, I've figured out a way over the years to, you know, to, to do it without it really taking a toll on me. I know it sounds weird, but I, I, somehow I've always been able to keep it in perspective and to be able to turn it off at times and say, okay, now I'm going to be, you know, family guy, dad, Chris, and right. go do what we do or ski down a hill or, you know, get on the Peloton bike or, you know, whatever, whatever you do to clear your head, you know, Smoke some ribs on the grill, whatever it is, to, to, <laughs> to dive into that. Ribs. You you know, ribs. I, 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 I know, I got, I got some right over here. I'm trying to, <laughs> I, I had late <laughs> lunch. I don't know that I have it in me to make them all, but <laughs> Yo, I'm decide between that and the chicken thighs here. <laughs> well, when, I get, when I get done with you guys, <laughs> do people recognize you though? Like, like say just, oh, yeah. right, just casually walking down the like, oh, is that Chris yeah. at the grocery store, like, like that. Or? You know what's weird is that even with the mask on. You know, people will stop you and say you want to chat. And, and you know, Gabriel and I will be someplace, you know, like a Home Depot or whatever. And if I'm unshaven with a ball cap on, people won't necessarily <laughs> recognize me. But when I speak, <laughs> yeah, the voice, the voice is, is rather unmistakable. It, it, I, uh, it. I, get, I get made oftentimes just by opening my mouth. So, Chris, we have a segment on the show called Truth or Truth. Like what we normally do is we normally go around the room and ask each other. Like I believe in transparency. Sure. So we we normally go around the room and ask each other whatever we want. No, it, it no, no with any topic. But we've been asking you questions for an hour. You <laughs> pick anybody in the room. You how you could ask a question for the room. You could act. You could fire off four questions. It could be personal. Oh, she trying to shoot her shot at yeah. Chris Hansen. <laughs> 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 she, she's yeah. Nah, nah, it's to, to, it's to get them to open up. It's to get them to open up a little bit more. Chris, she has nah, weed. Nah, 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 she nah. has weed on her. No, if, I that, don't. <laughs> if that's your thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have I'm good. I'm, good. I'm spoken for, although I'm flat. He's <laughs> spoken for. I don't Checking your DM in five minutes. I said spoken, not smoken. Yo, All right, whatever. You got those lines. All right, well, I'm going to ask this. What, it's good. That's what's funny. the funniest bit you've ever done? Me or for? Yeah. On stage. Performing. Mm, wow. All right, because me and him are both comedians. But wow. all right, cool. Right. The funniest bit I've ever had, I've ever done on stage. Oh, that's easy. 
I uh I had a bit about my girlfriend and how I'm not gonna go in, I'm not getting in no argument with no female. No. <laughs> I'm not. Because uh, we got this. Because we got a rule. We don't go to bed mad at each other. So whenever I feel like an argument's coming on, oh, I just go right to sleep. <laughs> she be like, "You didn't take the garbage out, bitch." <laughs> but somebody's still mad. <laughs> no, you can't be. But she's we, still mad. We got ground rules. Joke, we don't go to so bed. So you just mad. care about you, you. We don't go to bed mad. We. That's you, something. the only one that's not mad. That's something she would have to deal with on oh her own God. time. Oh <laughs> Apparently, I'm not. Well, what about you? What's the funny joke? <laughs> Me. Gotta be. I joke about my mom's where because she was a religious lady. So, but like whenever we would mess up, she would quote the Bible, but she didn't know the Bible very well. So she would just say whatever she wanted to say and act like God said it. So that was just that was that was my joke when it came that's to her. Not funny. So she would. I know. That's how I came up with it. So, so it's uh, that's what that's the funniest shit I've ever done personally. But you know. All right. Here's a question for the room. Then down okay. the line, who's funnier, Chappelle or Rock? Oh, for me that's easy, that's but I'm biased. Good. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let let's let Lex go first. Ladies first. Chris Rock or Dave Chappelle? Who's See, I love them both. Uh, yeah. Honestly, I watched Chris Rock before I watched Dave Chappelle. Okay. So, so did I. like, you know, I kind of didn't watch Dave Chappelle growing up, but I did start watching him like I would say probably in high school. She ain't going to answer the question. No, 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 no. No, I would say, Rob, I can't really, like, I can't really answer that. If I don't, I don't know him as much as they do is what I'm saying. So I can't really, I can't really give you a straight up answer. I can, just, I can be biased, I guess. Too. Who do you it's think a hard is, question. You know? I'm not pretending it's easy. Who do you think is funny? They always got a shit in my answer. Well, you always. Give one. Always, I was trying to, but shit, you don't, you never. It's she not a like, yes or no. She was like, who do I think is funny? I got to elaborate. Chris you Rock, know? Dave Chappelle. Well, Joe Coy is so funny. <laughs> I love him. And so cute. Like, what the come on? I just, okay. Niggas going to add shit. You know that. I'm niggas. Oh my yeah, God. I know. I deal with this every single week. All right. <laughs> Cerebral Jesus. Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle. Who, who's your pick? Uh, Chappelle. Dave Chappelle? All right, cool. I'm going to let Quo go. Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle. Man. I know what he's going to say. Go ahead. I don't know what I'm gonna say. How you know what I'm gonna say? It's it's, it's tough because it's like because you be hating on my son. His humor is mm -hmm. different though. I feel it's <sighs> right. it's tough. I'm gonna go with. Oh, you, gonna say Dave <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you don't say shit about his response it, though. No, because <laughs> I did. You got to listen. Chris Rock in 1999 no. was <laughs> bring the pain crazy, but Dave Chappelle, what he's doing right now, it's also crazy. So you're asking yeah. yourself, what's crazier? And it's like I can really. I, I don't know if I could pick, man, but I. I you know, I, the reason I, well. I ask those two because they both have, to me, this really wonderful way of looping the bit, the act, mm -hmm. around a series of bits that comes around in, a, in an arc of storytelling that brings it back to where it starts. Yes. And, and I, th I think, and again, I'm not, you know, anywhere near having the ability to be a comedian but you got the one line story though. from as well yeah but from a storytelling <laughs> standpoint and to to perform without a net the way both guys do uh to me it, it's quite fulfilling to watch because it, it it comes all full circle and they often end with the, the way point where they started yes and, and it, it takes a lot of that's yeah because you have, like when I give a speech, for instance, like I have five points that I want to make and the rest of it is connective tissue, you know, and I'll feel the room and, and get a sense of it. And sometimes I don't know exactly what my opening bit is going to be until I get on that stage. Yes. And, and so, and again, this is a, just a tiny microcosm, not even close to what these guys do, but I just, I, I, I watch them in awe. Because of the way they're able to to put all this together in 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 you know an hour ninety minute show and I, I think yeah it's same same, same here it's man yeah. great skill like f for me my pick is Chris Rock just simply because not only did I grow up on Chris I've seen more of him mm -hmm. but 
I know that's what you said. I know that's what you said. You're always stuff, Flex. I know. But I've had conversations with Chris, and it just take that now I understand a little bit better. He just said he had a conversation with Chris. You see that? She talked over it. Nah, he disregarded what I said because he spoke to him. But I'll watch, you know, you know, so many different comedians, but but I'll like Chappelle that sticks and stones. I probably watched it 10 times yeah. and I take, I pull it apart because the storytelling part of it is so good and, and so real that, that you can, that's applicable to any trade, any, any entertainment or, or information that you're trying to get out there. I, I just think it's, 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 it's an amazing talent. No, you're absolutely right. Chris. Wait, can I ask a quick one question? Go, right. Hit him one more. Has anyone yeah. ever said you look like Steve Kerr at all? Never, because he does not bro. look just like Steve Kerr. <laughs> no. Just a little bit? Okay. No, 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 no. Like I, I used to get Kevin Bacon joke. every once in a while. But <laughs> who do you get? Wait, who do you get? I was curious. I used to get Kevin Bacon years ago. Oh. Oh. He doesn't know who Kevin Bacon is. He's a creep now. Kevin Bacon's a creep now, isn't he? I don't know. He wasn't on the show. He's on City on a Hill. Oh, there we go. All right. Yeah. On Showtime. He's a creep no, no he's thinking of the other guy. Oh, no. Chris Hansen, thank you for coming. Th- thank, <laughs> thank you for coming. What a great time. Thanks for having me, Willie. Appreciate you.